All right, so recently Hypotech made a video on the Glorious GMT Pro and he basically talks about how it's not necessarily a bad product in 2023. It's just not where it used to be because there's a lot of other products out there that are at the same price range or cheaper, but perform even better than the GMT Pro. And so this basically got me thinking about how this is pretty much what I thought about their line of mice. And so what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be going through Glorious' catalog and kind of looking at what I think is still worth it in 2023, if at all, and what kind of loses to the current competition out there right now. Now, before I get into this, I want to say two things about Glorious that I feel deserves to be mentioned. The first thing is that they are basically the mouse company that brought affordable, lightweight mice to the masses. If you know your mouse history, you'll know that Final Mouse was basically out here trying to pump out honeycomb shell mouse designs for like $190 plus and limited drops and everything. And Glorious took that idea, but made it affordable and accessible for the public. And that is something I can really respect Glorious for. The second thing is that their customer support is absolutely amazing. If you have a broken Glorious mouse, you can actually write in and send an email and they will send you a completely new mouse free of charge provided you give the receipts. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty, not so clean stuff. All right, so currently Glorious has three lines of mice. The first one is the original Glorious O, D, and I. The second one is their O2 and their I2. And the third are their group by mice. I'm not going to talk about the group by mice because those... That's an entire other rabbit hole of shit. It's really just something that needs a video on its own, so I'm not going to talk about it today. Now, both the O and the O2 offer wired and wireless, but I'm mainly going to focus on the wireless one simply because those are currently the more popular ones on the market, and also because anything I say about the wireless ones will also apply to the wired ones. Okay, let's look at the O wireless first, and then we'll look at the O2 wireless. Now, the original Model O weighs 69 grams and uses a 3070 rebranded 3070 sensor. Um, I have no idea what switches they're using. It doesn't say here. Mine has Omrons in it, but I know they changed to Kales. I'm not sure if they changed it back or switched sometime down the road. I'm assuming they're going to use Kales now. All right. The O2 wireless weighs 68. 8 grams, wow, 1 gram reduction, that's that's gonna do a lot. Um, it uses a 3395 sensor, and I believe also uses Kales. I don't know if it says here, I don't think it does. Glorious switches rated for ADM clicks. Why do they have to rebrand everything? I have no idea what switches are in this thing now. I'm gonna assume they're Kales because of the way they're advertising it as being crispy and clicky. So these two are essentially the same shape, save for the mouse buttons. They have different internals and have different price points. The old wireless is 80 US dollars and the O2 wireless is 100 US dollars. There's a $20 price difference there. Now here's the funny thing. On paper, if you just gave me the specs, these are mice I would recommend. 80 and 100 dollars for wireless mice are not bad at all. Now for a bit of context, the G Pro X Super Lite 2 that was just released is 160 US dollars. The Sora is 90 bucks. The Lanzo Atlantis Mini is also 90 bucks if I'm not wrong. Here's the issue. The problem with Glorious is and always has been since day one, the quality control of all of their products. Just so that I'm completely clear, there is a difference between quality control and build quality. Build quality mainly talks about how good the product is in terms of the materials, as in how good the materials used to make it were and everything, like how little flex, how little travel and all that stuff. The build quality on Glorious Mice has always been fine. The quality control has not. Quality control talks about how wide the margin of error is in that build quality. As in, you might have a perfect copy. Everything about it is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. But the person next to you might have had a copy that came faulty, like with bad switches or like screwed up skates or the plastic is creaking really badly or squeaking, battery is dying, sensor is having skipping issues, stuff like that. So back when the Model o Wireless first came out, it was pretty much one of the only options on the market that you could buy for wireless mice. And so it was something that I pretty much had to recommend because it was the cheapest one out of everything. But but after a few months, after a few weeks even, not even a few months, um, I started to regret my decision simply because a lot of people that bought the mouse from my recommendation were receiving bad copies. If you have a good copy of the Model D or Model O wireless, I think that's fantastic because these are generally decent mice. They're not bad mice. They're also not fantastic. They're just good enough. And if you got a good copy of that, then that's great. You're using it well. But I basically feel really bad for a lot of people that bought a mouse and then just have it stop working. Yes, you can go for warranty and get a new mouse and everything, but it's such a tedious process and you're locked into that mouse. Let's say you bought the Glorious and it breaks and then you get a new one from warranty and then it comes and it breaks again. And it's, it's very frustrating, right? Versus if you just spent like $10 more on let's say the Lambs or Atlantis Mini, and that came well, and you, have, you don't have to worry about like sending out emails every single fucking like month to get a new copy of the mouse. So there's that. If you really do want to get a Glorious product because you feel that it is the end game product for you and is a product that you want to try, then I think by all means go ahead if you really want to take that risk. But if you were to choose between the Mall O and the Mall O2, I would 100% say go for the regular O for the simple reason that the sensor implementation in the Mall O2 wireless is absolutely terrible. 
there is a well-known issue in the mouse community called DPI deviation, where basically on screen, even if it says 400 DPI, the sensor might not actually be putting out 400 DPI accurately. There are quite a few videos going over the issues of the Model O2 wireless compared to the regular O, and one of the biggest problems is the DPI deviation and how bad it is. The latency and battery life also doesn't seem to be fantastic, so that's not really something I would recommend. But yeah, once again, if you really want to get it, go for it. I'm not going to stop you, but it's not something I would personally recommend. The mice that I would personally recommend, which are at a similar price point, are the Lamzo Atlantis Mini and the Ninjutsu Sora, which recently had a 4K release actually a few days ago, so you can go check them out. These are both fantastic mice. They're both like 90 bucks. They're both really, really good. The Polish Sim 2 is a little bit outdated in terms of specs, but it's still one of my favorite mice and it's something that I'll still recommend now. By the way, don't tell anyone, but Polish has mentioned to me that they are planning to refresh the mouse. I'm excited for that. But yeah, that pretty much sums everything up. While the GMMK Pro wasn't a particularly bad keyboard, it also wasn't really fantastic. Their mice, on the other hand, they're pretty bad. <laughs>